Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton turning their focus on one another as they hit the campaign trail, ramping up attacks, going at it. And I'm telling you, November 8th, we better be careful because that election is going to be rigged. And I hope the Republicans are watching closely or it's going to be taken away from us. For the life of me, I don't know why someone runs to be president of the United States who thinks and says we never win anymore. Here to weigh in on the escalating war of words, Fox News contributor and former congressman Dennis Kucinich. Congressman, mm -hmm. always terrific to see you. I noticed Hillary Clinton Morning, had Warren Buffett sitting behind her. How does that help her if she doesn't want, if she's running against a completely anti-establishment candidate? Well, Warren Buffett is one of the smartest uh, businessmen in the world. So I, I think that uh, Hillary Clinton is certainly aligning with uh, business interests. And I, I think, you know, Warren Buffett's a self-made man who has uh, had extraordinary success. So I don't think that hurts her. <laughs> Other than he believes in raising taxes and that part of her tax plan is a 30 percent tax on people who make more than two million dollars a year. Well, well, the uh, uh, the idea of uh, making those who make more pay more is not a, a new idea. Uh, we've got to be careful, though, that this idea of increasing taxes somehow doesn't filter down to uh, those who are working hard, trying to get ahead and small businesses who are attempting to just uh, survive and also uh, tax increases can be a disincentive and we've got to be very careful when we start talking about that in terms of an election. I, I'm not Ooh. reflectively for tax increases uh, at any time. Congressman, yeah. it's, it's Cheryl Cassoni. I'm sorry, Dagan. I, I'm just really curious. Yesterday, Warren Buffett went after Donald Trump, and he used a very specific example, saying that he was approached about the casinos back in the 90s, that he said it was a bad business deal. You've got Michael Bloomberg, you've got now Warren Buffett and Mark Cuban going after businessman Donald Trump. Is this something that Donald Trump should be worried about? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, his brand is a successful billionaire businessmen and when you get other successful billionaire businessmen who join in the criticism uh, that's something that could uh, end up having an impact however I would like to say that uh, the American people are interested to hear from both candidates or, or all candidates what are you going to do uh, you know what what will you do with the economy how we get people back to work how will you improve uh, educational opportunities Health care opportunities. What will you do about retirement security, which many people are, are can, looking can, at with dread? Congressman, can I raise an issue, though? Because what yeah. you talk about, like the last seven and a half years in terms of the economy, and, and I know we're coming out of a deep recession, but they've been really lousy. And people mm -hmm. feel that. And if I listen to you and read between what you're saying, you're not really on board with what Clinton is proposing. Well, you have to keep in mind, I mean, as a member of Congress, I supported uh, a infrastructure bank of modernization with a, uh, a Republican, Steve LaTourette of Ohio. And uh, I'm, I, you know, I've had my differences with the approach that Democrats have taken, uh, which have, have not always been sympathetic to Main Street. You know, I, I actually worked with Mike Pence against the bailout of Wall Street. I felt it was a moral hazard. I felt that uh, people who bet in the casino of Wall Street, ought to, they take their chances. If they lose, they lose. The taxpayer shouldn't bail them out. But we, we have some serious structural problems in our economy that deal with monetary policy, the role of the Fed, our, our ability to meet the needs of the people. And frankly, uh, you know, both parties have failed the American people, which is why I see there's an opening that's created for uh, third parties in this election. I just don't know if they're going to be on enough ballots to make a difference. Right. Congressman David Webb here. Look, the millionaires' tax, as they like to call it, always ends up going lower. We've seen it at the states. It never stays at people two million and above. You you get involved with people or individuals. They have S corps. It ends up depressing uh, growth for people in that quarter million range combined incomes. So why do the Democrats keep pushing this and telling? us that they're for Main Street. It doesn't work. It always ends up hitting Main Street. Well, you know, I, I think one of the even bigger problems is the fact that these big corporations move offshore to avoid taxes. Yeah, but Main Street can, isn't moving offshore. Let's talk about no, Main no, no, Street. No, no, no. Listen, 
That's where I'm from. I'm from Main Street. I repre I've represented Main Street. And I can tell you that Main Street wants jobs. Main Street wants to be able to get uh, part of the productivity, their productivity gains. Uh, and that's, that's the issue. I mean, I'm not here as an advocate of more taxes. I'm not someone who just will go out reflexively and say, oh, if we have more tax increases, that's going to solve the problems in the economy. The inequities in our economy are structural, and they're, and they're not simply due to the way the tax system is structured. Congressman, it was great to see you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. We're digging into some serious issues, and I know that voters across this country are doing the same thing. Thank you again, Congressman.